When you think of sport in South Africa, rugby, cricket or surfing probably come to mind. But there's one man who has put this country firmly on the map of mountain biking. In a career spanning nearly 20 years, he's been three times a world champion and is the most successful male downhill World Cup racer the sport has ever seen with an astonishing 19 wins. It's the unstoppable Greg Minar. Greg Minar puts himself into the history books. House Minar, big sign. Not sure he actually lives here. It does look like a bit of a work in progress. Here he is. How are you? How are you, GM? Nice good, to see you. Look at the views, man. We should go upstairs and have a look from upstairs. Have a look, yeah. Wow. Now that is a view. Look it is that. good. It's good, eh? That is the world track, right? Runs down it there? It is. Yeah, there's the tabletops through the gap in the trees. It's actually the first place I rode a mountain bike as well. Is it really? Yeah. Did you build this here <laughs> to reminisce? Because I imagine you coming out here like the Lion King every morning, puffing your chest out and bathing in the magnificence of your own glory. That's exactly what I'd do. <laughs> Not sure I'm going to do that, but <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a good idea. We could have a few beers, sit out here one day when we're your age, just <laughs> looking back at it. I don't know. I think it would be pretty cool, yeah. It, it is a spectacular view, yeah. Thank Amazing. you, yeah. I mean, you know, you say you started riding mountain bikes mm. there, and then 20 years later, you became world champion. A terrible start to last season. Turned it around in Fort William, like, to be honest, I, I didn't think you could. Took your 19th World Cup win there. No one's done more. That's the record. You are officially the greatest male World Cup racer there's ever been. Is that something this year you're going to take motivation from and, and want to step it up even more? I think what's going to make me step it up is the young guns on the team. Yeah. You know, you don't have to win the race. You're going to be the fastest in the team. That's right. It's a that's, big thing. <laughs> you know? So that's the motivation this year. And that's not going to be easy, especially yeah. with Verge and Luca Shaw, who's just getting better and better. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. And going back to Fort William last year, it was an incredibly emotional event. It was the first time that the mountain bike community came together since we so tragically lost Steve Smith. How close were you with Steve? And, and did those emotions perhaps fire you up there a bit more? It was a tough week going in, you know, and um, Gabe Fox had got all these badges made for the riders, which was pretty cool. So. We all had irons on our, on our jersey, and it was tough. I'm getting goosebumps just to thinking yeah, about it. I mean, it was. But to have won that particular race, yeah. it's kind of a, a special, special win. Well, you've had an incredibly illustrious career, and I know you've kept a fair bit of the history and there's something I've got to see. Where is it? <laughs> I've got a shop just down the road here. Yeah. I think we should go over that. That'll be the next place I'll take you. Is the Honda there? It is. Oh it is. yeah. Come on then. I think this is what you wanted to see. Oh. Can we get it down? <laughs> the <laughs> orange. No, the Honda, <laughs> the Honda. Look at the Honda. It's beautiful. Take us for a timeline of these bikes, Greg. OK, this is 2001, and that's the one in Montserrat against Nico. And that's the one you became World Cup overall winner on? Yeah, yeah. The Honda 2005 World Cup winning bike. Now, look at it. Two of those bikes in existence. I'm looking at one of them, and it is the most beautiful mountain bike ever made because it looks almost like a motorbike. It's just ahead of its time, really, I think. Yeah. I mean, it still looks pretty modern right now. Yeah, yeah. And where's the bike that you won Peter Maritzburg on? I've got a replica. Come Rob Roskop kept the original. <laughs> there it is, the replica of the World Championship <laughs> winning bike. <laughs> Talking about the World Championship, the third one, that you won here in Peter Maritzburg, about 100 yards that way. Yeah. Like you said earlier, you know, you started riding mountain bikes on that ridge line, yeah. and then, you know, a, lot, a little while later, you're world champion on that track. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, was a, it was a great day. I remember standing on the podium looking up at the sun setting and just thinking, shit, that's the same forest I grew up riding. So I think I'm quite fortunate to have to race in the hometown. Well, I've been in a few bike shops in my time, but none with the history of that place. That blew me away. Greg took that off his dad. His dad actually sounds like a bit of a character. So we're going to go and meet him now and a few more 
of the Minar family. Looking forward to this. So he didn't like bicycles to no. start with. On his fourth birthday, we had bought him a 50cc. And that was the beginning of him riding and Mark when White. he opened that parcel in the morning, he was shaking like this. <laughs> he couldn't <laughs> talk. That was the start of Greg Minar as we know him now. Yeah. But he took to car jumping. From there, um, he started getting more into the downhill racing. Right. He took a chance, really, and he went to Europe to race bicycles. And all of a sudden, 2001, he wins a World Cup. How did that make you feel? Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's terrifying. Oh, yeah. It? Proud. It's just gobsmacking. Yeah. Because here, it's such a little sport. Well, yeah. And over there, it was so big. Yeah, that's right. We were absolutely amazed. Greg, this lad from South Africa, came along and smashed it. He's an icon, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No doubt about that. Mm. But 2012, Peter Maritzburg, we had the World Cup here. I didn't know at the time how ill you were, but you were critically ill. In hospital here in Peter Maritzburg, the World Cup's two miles over there. Greg's at practice every day. Did that help you get through it, though, Greg, like racing over there like that? Getting a bit emotional. Within two days, he had two huge ups. Everything started to close down, oh. kidneys and everything. So they had to put him into a, an induced coma for a week. What? And this was while Greg was over there yeah. practicing while and Greg, racing? While I Greg mean, was... how on earth? Then they brought Jeff out from the um, induced coma. And the first thing Jeff said was, boy, you've got a race to ride. And Greg said he took that as yes, so he went and rode. And Greg Vidal, he takes the first win of 2012, and that was something special. And you look and you see Max Kluwer jumping in the air, and you look at that entire crowd, and everyone is going absolutely crazy, because yeah. they all wanted that one person to win, and that one person's your brother. And he won. Anyone. Do you go and have a word with him, give him any advice pre-race, you two? That doing the best is the best, it's the best you can do. We we'll all just will be glued to the TV and we just won't leave. Him. Yeah. Every race. But it's also yes. quite scary because when he crashes, we just get so sad. But he doesn't crash much, he's pretty good. <laughs> Imagine if you had to watch him lose and crash every week. It, it would be so much worse for you, wouldn't it? It's day two, and I'm off to Sani Pass. I'm actually off to another country, Lesotho. Lesotho? Close. The images I've seen of it look spectacular. It's going to be some ride down this mountain. But the weather's against us, although it'll take a little bit more than a drop of rain to stop us, I'm sure. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. It would have been rude not to give it some Lion King. Look at this. Do they even have lions in South Africa? Well, that's not the Honda, is it? Well, Rob, I know, like, the 90s was your era. <laughs> this is the closest thing I had. I even brought you a matching helmet. Perfect, great. This is a bit dusty. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, thanks for bringing it, but is it going to offend you if I say no? Yeah. Am I bothered? <laughs> Are we going? Yeah. Are we off? We're off. going off everywhere. It's bonkers. It was massive. Did you see that one? The maddest electrical storm. Lightning everywhere is, is hit us. So we've had to... Well, I'm not going out. <laughs> I don't think anyone else is very keen either. Greg's sat over there as well, and he's not up for it. He's quite brave being African. The rain's not a problem, but there's a lot of lightning. I know Rob's shitting himself. What, and you're not? 
Greg will be all right. He's on a carbon fibre bike, but that thing he's trying to get me to ride is made out of steel, so no chance. Well, I'm absolutely gutted not to have ridden the Sani Pass, but every cloud has a silver lining. I'm heading now to Cascades, the mountain bike area where Minar can go quite fast. And to be honest, I'm just keen to get on a bike. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be slick, huh? It is. It's going to be really slick. Gorilla's in the mist. <laughs> Let's just go right. <laughs> God, you're mighty. Woo! Wait. Nice and easy to keep up. <laughs> Greg, it's been a brilliant, if not exhausting, few days with you. You are a hard racing, hard living African man, there's no doubt about that. I think what amazes me is just how long you've managed to stay at the top. You know, the sport's changed around you, but you're there every year, and this year going to be any different? And I hope not. I don't think so. I feel good. I feel good on the bike. I had good testing in December get the confidence up, I think. Yeah, hopefully have a good season. I'm not writing you off, man. At least someone's backing me up in this. <laughs> Thanks, Warner. Thanks for everything, man. Thanks a lot, brother. How come there's no, like, wild elephants here? <laughs> I think I just heard a cheetah. Kyle, what is that? Holy Toledo, man. I've never seen a giraffe in the wild. Holy Toledo. I've never heard that before. Not for a giraffe. <laughs> you should know this. What are the big five? Leopard. Kangaroo. I feel like Tarzan. I don't think I can look at the zebras for too long. I'm going to get a headache. They're like a massive duck. Look at the size of them. The thing I don't get about wild animals is that they don't do anything all day long. Like, don't they get bored? Here, yeah, boy. Oh, now they're off. You didn't exactly run after it. Can't run after it, can we? I'm not frightening wild. Greg, it's a game reserve, man. Be cool. <laughs>